Greetings once again, everybody. Today on the Front Stretch Wrap Up, we're welcoming on my old pal back from the NASCAR days. I say that like we're 20,000 years old, but Kyle Souza, I'm so glad we finally got this Texas race in because I was starting to go crazy. I don't know about you. I, I, I can't really imagine I've ever been to a race that took that long. And I know it wasn't on the track that long, but I mean, in our lifetime, which is not that long, I, I can't really picture a rain delayed race that took that many days to get going. I don't know about you. I was going to ask you, what's the longest rain delayed race that you've been a part of? It may, it may have been something on the modified tour, probably. Yeah, I mean, I've been a part of local rain delays that have been, you know, a week or two where you just yeah. didn't get to race for two or three weeks because of Mother Nature. But that's when you only run one day a week. I mean, these guys can run a couple of days. And I mean, the weather situation there, I, I can't imagine what it was like to be at the track for three days. Never mind be frustrated at home. I know. I was sitting on the couch and I was just like losing my mind. I, I really got to commend, though, like the people that are driving the air Titans, the jet dryers, race control, like everybody. And I know it sounds cliche, but honestly, put yourself in their shoes. Nobody wants to get the race back going more than them. And they did everything they could. It's just that the crazy part of it is too, Kyle, like it never rained. It was just missed the entire time. So we had a rain delay for three days and it never rained. It was well, just I think, I think the funny thing is in talking, I mean, I was at a modified race this past weekend up here in New England, but talking to Tommy Baldwin, um, who's part of one of the cup teams now, former Daytona 500 winning crew chief. He raced up here on Saturday, flew to Texas on Sunday, and brought two sets of clothes with him. One for Sunday and one for Monday for the fly back because there was literally almost zero chance of rain Sunday. And somehow it rains and he's out of clothes. And I think we've seen Joey Wagano jumped on a media Zoom in the middle of one of the rain delays because he was bored. Doesn't happen very often. And he actually called Eddie Gossage, I saw on Twitter, to see if he had anything for him to do. I mean, yeah. they must have been bored we were bored at home we had other things we could have done but those guys sat there for three days and those air titans imagine how much jet fuel they went through because oh they tried God. like crazy to drive that track for three straight days and it finally it just happened to work there yeah. uh, on wednesday and luckily it did because otherwise it sounded like the martinsville schedule was going to get impacted pretty good too yeah if it went into thursday it definitely would have been impacted and also i feel for Corey lajoy because i saw like late last night before i was going to bed his plane something was wrong with it so they had to spend another night in texas it's just like when it rains it pours that's just it's like it a mini vacation for him yeah that's true well i'll tell you what no vacation for kyle bush this year because it's been a, he a hell of a year for him in, in a bad way but this weekend at texas he finally gets off the schneid i i'll be honest i didn't think he was going to be able to save enough fuel because i was listening to the 18 radio the entire last 50 lap run and adam stevens lap after lap telling him the gap telling him to save a little bit if he can. Kyle's just silent, calm, cool, and collected. But he gets the win, and afterwards he said that this felt as big as a championship. Yeah, I saw actually the cool-down lap with his fist out the window. I haven't seen him that excited in a while. And Kyle Busch is one of those guys that wins races so often, usually, that he doesn't get overly excited, right? We see guys, you think back to like Dale Earnhardt Jr. won at Martinsville that year, jumping up and down a victory lane. Yeah. We don't see that out of Kyle Busch a whole while. I think because he wins all the time. And I know he's won Xfinity truck races uh although he hasn't won cup races but that was a big win for him and i think Davey, honestly a big win for joe gibbs racing in a point where you know that may have saved adam stevens's job if you look at the bigger picture kyle bush is going to stay in that 18 car next year no matter what happens but adam stevens may have saved his life basically as a crew chief winning that race because otherwise i i personally think that he was going to be in jeopardy with the championship caliber driver they couldn't even win a race and then all of a sudden yesterday they had speed all day and they, it was pretty clear by the end of the second stage that he was going to be one of three or four guys who are going to have to watch uh, to win the race. I'll say this. I think Adam Stevens probably saved his job as the crew chief of the 18 team. I think that his, I mean, his resume speaks for itself, right? Two championships, tons of race wins. He's dealing with the most volatile driver in the cup series. You could argue. I mean, I said on my podcast earlier today, like, Dealing with Kyle Busch itself is a full-time job. Yes. Add being a crew chief on top of that and the demand and the excellence that he demands, that's like a really, really tough gig to have. So, and he said too, like he's questioned himself throughout the year. He doesn't know if he's going to be back next year because Kyle has publicly said that there's going to need to be changes made to this 18 team, but it extends Kyle's streak of 16 straight seasons with the win. And it's crazy to think about, too. It snapped his 33-race winless streak, which dates back to last year at Homestead. But that was just a, an, a case where Denny Hamlin put too much tape on the grill. Kevin Harvick had a bit of an off day, and Martin Truex Jr.'s pit crew had the tires swapped. If none of those things happen, 
Kyle Busch probably is standing here with over a year's uh, yes. winless drought. And it just happened that things went his way that day and things went his way today as well. Well, if you look back at what, um, you know, transpired at Texas, Denny Hamlin had that problem early in the race. Then when we restart the race, he gets into Matt Kenseth after Kenseth gets all kind of crossed up in front of him. That hurt his chances. Kevin Harvick hits the wall back on Sunday, which seems like forever ago at this point. Yep. And still, I mean, had a mediocre day. But saving those guys in the, the bubble battle is their bonus points that they earned. Their playoff points, their stage wins. I can't stress enough. There's guys like Alex Bowman that are below the cut line. Bowman's got two top five finishes in the first two races of this group. And he and lost think, ground. Yeah, like he's actually lost ground. And that just proves, I mean, this is really competitive. And you start looking ahead, Martinsville, I get excited about it. You, you get chills thinking about what's going to happen Sunday night with the guy in second. If he's not in the final four and there's a couple laps to go, that bumper is probably going to get used. And that, you know, it's, it's actually a shame. I know you've been to Martinsville uh, in this COVID era. Uh, this weekend. Yeah. And with no fans, that was one thing. But this time there's going to be a thousand people, which yeah. isn't that many people for a big Martinsville Speedway like that. It'll make a difference, though. Absolutely. I th still think it's going to be a surreal moment. Yeah, for sure. So let's talk about Martinsville before we go. Taking a peek at the cutoff. You got Kevin Harvick, who's up over 40 points. He should be good, barring any unforeseen craziness that happens. Yeah. Denny Hamlin and Brad Kozlowski hold the final two transfer spots. They're over 20 points clear. Alex Bowman and Chase Elliott are 25 points apiece back. And then you have Martin Truex Jr., who had that 20-point penalty pre-race at Texas for the confiscated spoiler. Kurt Busch is minus 81. He obviously has to win to get in. So I'll ask you point blank. Do you think that we see any moving and shaking with the top four that we have currently, or do you think it stays the same? This is a tough question. I think there's two guys outside. I, listen, the 88's been quick. They've been top five. I'm not quite sure they're going to have enough to win Martinsville. They haven't quite shown their short track program to be good enough to win. Chase Elliott's been really good at Martinsville, really good on the small flat tracks. He's got a shot. If there's going to be movement, though, it's going to take one of two things. Number one, I think Martin Truex Jr. is a downright favorite to win the race with how he's been in lately. That could be a major player in this. If not, I think it's going to take one of those guys in the top four to really stumble. And to me, it's got to be Brad Kozlowski. If Kozlowski's not the one that stumbles, yeah, I don't see it changing. I, I, I think we're pretty much, we've got our final four, barring a miracle. But with, with, with that record that Martin Truex Jr. has, I mean, it's pretty much his ball game. If he goes in there and dominates like he has, then Brad Kozlowski's in trouble. And, you know, Denny Hamlin could have a little bit of a problem. 41 points for Kevin Harvick. I'm with you. I'm comfortable with that. Hamlin, hmm, there could be a little bit of a barring problem there that he could have that's going to knock him out. This is going to be intriguing, but I think if we get to stage three and those guys haven't had a problem, somebody's got to win to knock them out. Especially going back to the first Martinsville race, Denny Hamlin did not have a good day at all. Struggled yeah. really badly in the first stage. And I understand there were a lot of comers and goers in that specific race, but all it takes is one day being on your game to win the title. We saw that last year with Kyle Busch. And Joey Logano a couple years back, all it takes is a bad day to be off your game and you don't have a shot to even contend for the title. And that's what we've seen almost transpire here in these playoffs because Denny's only two points ahead of Brad. So even if Brad were to fall out, Denny is hanging on by the skin of his teeth. I do agree with you that Truex is probably going to be the car to beat, especially given that he's going for broke. He has to win the race to get in. And he's won the last two races at Martinsville. It's called Martinsville for a reason. You know what I mean? Come on. Listen, I think that Denny Hamlin's in a good position. I'm comfortable with him. Kozlowski, I'm pretty comfortable with him, too. Their flat track, small package, yeah. uh, the smaller tracks has been good. I mean, look what happened at Richmond. I mean, he's, he's no joke on these smaller tracks, and he's successful at Martinsville. But Truex, if I was Brad Kozlowski, I'd be concerned. Martin Truex Jr. has really kicked everybody's butt at Martinsville the last couple of times there, and that would be the one guy that I would be concerned about. But, I mean, it's also Martinsville. Alex Bowman could be there. Chase Elliott could be there. I personally don't see Kurt Busch being there, but you never know what's going to happen in the last 50 laps. If some pit strategies played or something like that, that's why they call it Martinsville. It's going to be a heck of a show. And the fact that you're going to be there to see it, I'm jealous. That's going to be a good time. Yeah. I'm, I'm really excited. I'm not sure if I'm going to actually like be in the press box on Sunday. We're still working out some details of that, but I will be there this weekend on behalf of frontstretch.com. So with that being said, follow us everywhere. Cause we're going to be, busting out all sorts of content this weekend. And Kyle Souza, our wonderful social media director, will be helping us all through it. Kyle, where can people follow you personally on social media to keep up with you and your work? 
Twitter's the best place at K Souza. It's S O U Z A two six one on Twitter. Forget the other social media channels. Twitter's the one with the why breaking news yeah. updates happen. Come join us on there, Davey. Yeah, uh, have fun at Martinsville. Look forward to catching up soon again. Thank you, sir. I will. And by the way, if you guys like modified racing, Kyle is the guy. He's not a guy. He's the guy. But that will wrap things up today for the Front Stretch Wrap Up. We'll talk to you guys next week to recap Martinsville, hopefully not on a Thursday, and preview the championship weekend at Phoenix. Phoenix.